think. And the first thing on the agenda is questions and issues. Does anyone have something what's not on the agenda they want to discuss? Okay, I guess nobody has anything. Then a uh, bunch of opened PRs, which are open for some time and maybe we should discuss them. So I think this was one of them. Are we still doing some work on this? I don't think Michal is around. Jakub, do you know? I think uh, he uh, executed the regression uh, suite and I don't know the result from that, but if it is, I think green, uh, it seems no. There is uh, some problems, I would say. But yeah, I think I, this, I... Is, this is like maybe one day work. Okay, so let's keep it open. Then the next one is this one. I guess that goes back to you, Tom. I knew this one was going to come back. Yes. Um, if you need more time, you can <laughs> move it to the next No, time. no. I think... So the patch does what it sort of sets out to do, but I don't really like um, the sort of extra complexity that comes with the patch. I feel like um, I kind of feel that it would be better if we um, we sort of refactored the operator in a slightly more significant way. I must admit, I don't have a clear idea in my head exactly what I'm proposing with such a refactoring. Um, so we sort of dis we've discussed it previously, haven't we? And last time, what did we say? We said, well, we talked a lot about finalizers and about yeah short reconciliation loops and so on so should we close this one saying that it needs to be a bit more thought through to make sure that the complexity is not overwhelming and It's handled in a better way. Yeah, um, action on me to um, to comment on that issue to basically sort of um, say what I think the problems are with it and sketch a direction that I think we should consider going in. I think we should be careful of who does that and when does he do that. Yes. Because it will definitely conflict with a lot of the other work we have. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that um, we necessarily need to do it um, immediately, but I think we do need to, um, yeah, I, I, I at least need to describe some of the ideas I've got here and why I think that they are might be yeah. better than that PR. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that when you comment on the PR with the ideas, I think we should be careful to not give Mike an idea that he works on without further consulting and then comes up yes. with some, another huge refactoring PR, which screws up a lot of other work. I think we should make it clear that 
it's probably fine if he takes part of that. That's of course welcome, but it needs to be a bit more planned and fit into the plan, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because I yeah I think you should try to avoid that you give there some feedback and then we get some surprise PR which breaks lots yeah. of other work and so on. Yeah, I agree. I will try and make that point. Okay, and then the first PR which I added here. That's actually your Smarosh. Ah. That, that's the one where I think we need to look into it in more detail. Because I don't think there should be any link between the reconciliation times in the topic operator and what gets or doesn't get into the connector status. So if that fix your test, then there might be something very suspicious in what's going on. I see. So I remember that uh, I tried to, I don't know, like I wrote that, that I execute this test without this uh, change. And I think that uh, it uh, uh, basically failed after, I don't know, third time or fourth time. And after my change here, I know that there is no like relation between this uh, after your last command. But if it is somehow, I don't know, it's it's some luck, but from the 10, 10 uh, executions, it uh, just uh, worked fine. But so I know that there is something like suspicious probably. Okay. Can you try to write there some, I don't know, manual steps, how to reproduce it or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, so I will I, do that. So one thing which I wonder about is if you change the reconciliation interval from 120 seconds to 600 seconds, will it be more likely to fail and easier <laughs> to reproduce? And I then kind of, yeah, I mean, it sounds suspicious that it has this relationship. So maybe it shows some bug or some issue, or maybe at the end we find out that there is something related. But it definitely sounds to me that it's weird enough to kind of investigate it a bit more. Okay. So if you if you maybe can this try to get some reproducer steps, it doesn't have to be a code, just kind of manual steps, do this, do this, do this then yeah, I guess me or someone else can try to look into it if we figure out some weird relationship or something. Okay, I will do that. Thanks. Okay, then I guess the next, so does anyone have any other PRs to discuss? I think most of the others, they seem to be either worked on or, or up to date. But if anyone has anything else, then we can discuss it as well, of course. If not, then the next topic is the test container. So I guess over to you, Marosh. Once again, okay, uh, so uh, as you can see, I opened the PR uh, where I um, somehow changed the code which we have for the StreamZ Kafka container. Uh, there is also a multi node support currently. I have, I, I was forced to change and add the external zookeeper as to separate. Uh, the container. So basically now can customer can 
just uh, start Kafka with internal Zookeeper, or you can play with it uh, and just uh, for basically complex scenarios use the Kafka cluster, which basically uh, deploys uh, how many uh, Kafka nodes you want with one Zookeeper. Uh, also, uh, as we discussed uh, the previous session, we, uh, I updated or somehow upgraded the Kafka configuration. So now you can specify via constructor the all supported Kafka uh, configs. And from that PR, you can see how it is used. I also somehow rewrite uh, the tests uh, for Kafka connector. And next step is to rewrite the topic and user operator, but this is for the uh, next PRs. The, another thing what I want to discuss is uh, that I looked at the bridge tests. Uh, I somehow play with it and uh, open, not open. I, I, I have the, these changes on my fork. And I know that the Shubham uh, created PR where he replaced the, the Bezium Kafka cluster uh, with the embedded Kafka, but uh, I think that it's not bad, but uh, basically uh, I tried to use the Streamsy Kafka cluster. I know that uh, in the past I have some problems with it, but uh, I don't know, like uh, two days ago, I tried to uh, use the Streamsy Kafka cluster or Kafka container, and it works good with some changes that I made in my uh, fork PR. So I think we should use and bridge the uh, Streamsy Kafka cluster for all uh, for the IMQP test. Or maybe we can just set up the Kafka cluster with more nodes, but I think the Kafka containers is enough for that testing. And basically that's all what I have about the test containers. Any questions? So I guess that sounds like you can fix the usability issues. Mm -hmm. So I guess question on everyone else, I guess we want to keep it and use it then. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We should definitely migrate it to different repository. Yeah, because that's the yeah, next question, that. right? We still have the build issue. So, yeah, I guess we should merge the PR which Marosh opened, right? Because that's already yes, yeah. there. And then afterwards, the, just make credits to the another repository. So then, yeah, let's talk about it a bit more. So. So we move it to a separate repository, right? Mm -hmm. Which will be, let's say, named test container. Yeah, it's fine. Or the and, best container ever. <laughs> and I guess it has separate release cycle then, or at least it's kind of yeah, I think that's another thing which we need to decide. What's the release cycle for this? Every, when Kafka release some version, we can do it with it, or? Yeah, exactly. It's not coupled really to the streams releases, yes. right? It's more coupled to the Kafka releases. Exactly. So we do not need to do new release just to change the images from stream 025 to stream 026, as long as the Kafka remains the same. Yes. So we basically do new release when there's new Kafka version. And so I guess till now we have basically the version 0.25 out. So what will be the 
next version? Do we just continue in this versioning or should we set it apart somehow or should we call it 1.0 or? I think 1.0 sounds good. Because of these changes, I think it will be. And then afterwards we will just, I don't know, follow it from 1.1, 1, 1. 1, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else, anyone else has an opinion on it than me and Maros? Um, so I've looked very briefly at the PR, but I don't really remember the details. Um, you're able to spin up different versions of Kafka, aren't you? As I recall, Did it, it uses this, where do the images come from? It's the streams the images. Yes. But we can specify that. Oh, no, you cannot specify. I changed that. So it's only the version that you just uh, can edit. It's hard coded that we use these images from Quai. And you can only change the tag of the images. So if a new Kafka version comes out, Then we need a new oh. Strimzy release so that we've got Strimzy images. Yes. Or are we just going to use the? We can use we can use the the latest. For example, if Kafka now releases three point zero, we have to uh, build our images, and then afterwards we can use it in the uh, test container repo. I would say. Which means we can't use test containers in Strimzy for testing that new version of Kafka because we've got a cyclic dependency. You would need to use the latest container images in the test yeah. container, which. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Not sure anyone has any better idea. <laughs> Tell me if you are speaking, we cannot hear you. I'm not speaking, I unmuted and I've got nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And is there some solution for that? I think that this is the best. I I don't know. Yeah, I think I think this is the the alternative solution, which is too complicated to really contemplate. Um, would be to yeah no no. Yeah, we won't be able to use it in, in the operator repository, but we'll be able to use it in the other repositories which are with shoes and uh, other projects will be able to use it as well. 
so it's not not, not great, not terrible, I would say. <laughs> well, we are not using it in the operators repository now, right? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, I mean, Maro should need to remove it from part of the PR. But I guess at this point, it's not necessarily blocker. But I, actually it is in a way. I mean, typically we would want to update the bridge to the new Kafka version before the streams release so that we can use the updated bridge version with the new Kafka version in the streams release with the new Kafka version as well, right? So in general, ideally we would, might want to, you want to use in bridge Kafka 3.0 before it is released in stream Z as well. So uh, maybe the, another solution would be just uh, use different images. <laughs> but I don't think so. It's like. Yeah, we would need to build the different image, right? Yes. So if you use a different image, if you have just some test container image, I guess we do not need to support multiple Kafka versions. Because we probably just want the latest. Yes. Is that really something we want to do? I really don't know. This will be long meeting if nobody speaks. <laughs> it's not that I'm not thinking. It's just none of those thoughts result in anything that's worth speaking out loud. So not sure it makes sense to sit here and be silent. So should we think about it a bit more and get back to it next time? Or maybe 
think next time a lot of people will be off because of <laughs> holidays, Paolo and Tom and so on. So maybe we can also take it offline if you want to make it faster and discuss it on the mailing list or Slack. Just looking at the Kafka Docker file. If we were going to have separate images, the test containers only depend on Kafka, right? They don't depend on the Kafka exporter or any of the other stuff that we add in there, the agent, I third party libs. I think technically it's just the pure Kafka itself. It doesn't use even the streams scripts, anything. Right. So we could, if we were going to do something with different images, one way of doing that would be to have um, some other repo that provided base images for both the operator images and also the test container images. No, I'm not saying that's what we want to do. But don't. Yeah, exactly. But if that's what we were, if we were going to do different images, it would kind of make sense to do it that way rather than no, it would not having the sense. test containers duplicate multiple different versions of Kafka images. So I'm not sure we need multiple different versions of Kafka images if we have separate containers. Don't we need just the latest version? I think the latest one is good. So I think technically it's just a simple Docker file where we really just download the Kafka binaries, check some of them and, and unpack them and that's it. I can't help but feel it's easy to say at a point like this, oh, we'll never need different versions. And then six months from now, we'll have several reasons why we need different versions. I mean, I might be wrong, but. I don't know, isn't it easier to start with what we think we need now and then change it in six months if it turns out different, then. Yeah, as long as we're happy to go down that slippery slope in the future, that's fine. So currently, I can the best solution... just a single. Sorry, so, I... uh, so currently the best solution will be just have some Docker file and if the new binary of Kafka arrive, we just uh, build it, push it to the client and just use these images. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I mean, it's, Tom, it's the simple. idea to have the base image, which will be shared is technically correct, right? But if you take into the account the things like the base image CV, respins, and so on, you end up with a very complex setup. Yeah. Mm. So from that perspective, starting with a simple Docker file in the test container repo seems to be more sensible. Yeah, let's do that. Should we use also separate quay.io org to not mix it with the operator images? I think. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Okay, so we move it to the repository test container. We create new quay.io org streams it test container. 
when you release when new Kafka version is out, we build new streamsy test container image from a Docker file. in this repository and release it so back to the next version what should be the next version 1.0 Tom, Jakub? Well, how we will reflect the Kafka version in there? I don't think it will be reflected in the release notes, right? It will be written what it supports. Ah, okay. So, Does it have to hard code the image? Or at least the version. We've got a Java thing and we've got some an, an image. I guess that's on you, Marosh. I once again the question, Tom. I didn't hear you. Do we have to hard code the uh, image version in the Java code? Uh... We can hard code, but it's it's optional. Like you can use it, but you can also hard code it to the latest one, and um, users will only use the latest. So, if this is what you want, so we're hard coding which version is the latest. I mean, fundamentally, you've got two bits of software each, you know, I know we're kind of like saying that we'll just release a new version of the test containers when there's a new version of Kafka, but um, if latest, if, if, if you depend on a particular version of test containers and you've said you want the latest one and it's the, the version of test container, which, te you know, um, implies what latest means, um, then you might think you're testing against the latest, but you're not really because you're on an old version of the test container jar. Whereas if you can in avoid encoding into the jar what latest means, then latest can actually mean latest, as in the latest version of the image that's available. I don't know. Again, this is probably a necessary complication at the moment. Com confusion so, uh, I in guess... my mind. <laughs> But basically, we, I, guess we, we can call it. I know that the Jakub, uh, uh, I think, has some PR uh, with the Streamsy version. We had some problems with that. And we have the Streamsy version and the, the Kafka version in the, now in this uh, code. And from the Kafka version, we, we know which is, which is latest because of the Kafka version YAML or configuration file. I don't know specifically. And from the streams version, I don't know the logic, but there is somehow also. Well, I guess what Tom was suggesting was basically decoupling the, the release of the test container from the Kafka release. That we would, for example, have one repo, which would just release the test container container images with the Kafka versions. And then you would have the Streamsy test container with its 
completely separate release cycle where you basically pass the container image name as part of the startup of it. So, so technically you decouple this and maybe, so when new version of Kafka is released, as long as the interface between the test container and Kafka remains the same, you can basically use any kind of Kafka version. But it kind of screws up when the things change, right? When, for example, when Zookeeper is dropped and suddenly the way the container for this Kafka version is started, you would mm -hmm. need a new Streamzy test container release and you would need to have a knowledge about which container should be used with this version, which container should be used with that version and so on, or? Yes. So I don't know. Like Sounds I think like... that when we solve some problem, we the another problems arise. So yeah, sounds like something what needs more thinking. Yes, but I think good start is with these uh, points we have, like Docker file, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if, uh, as you said, if we drop the uh, zookeeper from the Kafka images, because now I'm using in every instance or in Australia zookeeper container and Kafka container, I'm using the one which we built. So. So who does the more thinking? You, Maros? I don't know. By the way, I think this is basically questions for everyone to think about it more. Yeah, it is. So should we... We need to continue with the other topics. So yes. should we move it probably to the community call in one month when Tom will be back? That sounds good. Sorry, Marosh, I guess you hope for easier outcome. So what do we do with the PR? I, I think we can merge it and just should wait. We, should we remove the... So I wonder if we should merge the changes which introduce the test container to the Kafka tests. Mm -hmm. I think it would be totally fine to merge the test container changes, but I'm not sure we want to change the tests if we don't know the path forward. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Merge, okay, uh... so I will 
like Chris said, that all changes that I have made, I think there is a few one regarding to the Kafka connector, IT test and just merge the these changes. We don't. Yeah, ba basically just keep the test container changes and remove the rest probably. Yes, that will do. And then we can merge this one so that we don't keep it around for a long time. Of course. And yeah, keep create another branch or something to keep a copy of the container tests uh, of the connector tests if we need it in the future. Good. Okay. I guess the next topic, another continue from last time, this is about the release process. So if anyone by chance still remembers, I had the slide deck about the release process, which I presented. And we gave everyone some time to think about it before saying, yes, let's do this. So did anyone thought about it? Does anyone have any comments or issues or with it or should we proceed with it? I think mostly that's uh, Jakob he was wanting to think about the uh, test pipelines, how that would work. Yeah, I, I completely forget it. So I have to get back to it next week. Sorry. Okay, so I guess next time. Uh, Tom, you are not in next time, so you are fine with it? I'm fine with it. I was enthusiastic about it last time. Okay, next incubation update. Is that me? Yeah, that would be you. Um, so I um, I spoke to, uh, well, it was Amy at CNCF. I asked the, the questions that we had last time. Um, I think I, uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah, so, um, Basically, the response. We, so the questions were: um, for incubation, we need to sort of uh, have some sort of idea of of uh, users um, using Strimzy, um, and we were sort of wondering, you know, um, do these have to be sort of uh, users in the community, or what about um, vendors who are um, basing stuff off of um, Strimzy? uh the users of vendor software sort of uh account in that way um and how much detail do we need and the other question we had was um how do we sort of get a sponsor for this and uh amy's reply was um when we sort of apply for incubation um we it's sort of part of the the process that um will um somebody from the the toc whoever is uh the sponsor um, and it's basically sort of someone from the TOC volunteers um, once we sort of uh, apply to go to incubator they um, they'll work with us to try and identify end users um, and get a sense of how they're using it in production so um, yeah it's not something that we have to come up with beforehand but obviously one of the first questions I think that they would ask is you know so who do you know is using it um, how can we sort of find out how they're using it in order to sort of provide evidence to this, the TOC um, that Strimzy has, you know, sufficient number and uh, quality of users to make it into incubator. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of clarity on, on how that works. Um, but, you know, I think it would be um, on us, at least initially, to sort of come up with um, people that we could refer the TOC to to or um sorry our sponsor to um does that make sense so did they give any indication about the vendor or not vendor uh no that part of it wasn't directly covered so we don't really know right on that point no Okay. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, we, if, if we could provide names of people that were using vendor software and the TOC would take a view on whether or not that counted, um, I think it's kind of all we can conclude you know, how, how much they want to sort of say, okay, that's fine, or how much they would want to see, um, you know, people using, you know, the Strimzy as it is, rather than something that vendors have, you know, done something to or whatever. Because, I mean, ultimately, the TOC, I think, really care about um, the health of communities. So if there's, you know, uh, an open source project without a viable community, but, you know, some vendor with lots of customers who are using it, then, you know, they probably wouldn't be completely happy with that. They probably wouldn't think of that as being sufficiently, um, yeah, sort of widely used. I think they, they want to see wide use of, of the open source version is my yeah. sort of gut feeling, but whether or not they would, take that stance um, at the point of incubation versus the point of, um, you know, graduation or not, I don't know. You know, it's a kind of a, a bit of a chicken and egg thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if the end users are related to the community diversity and so on. It always sounded to me more like a proof of a maturity level of the software. But I can, yeah, for example, relevance. see how it's hard to say if someone says they are using AMQ streams, it's hard to say what the difference is from Streamzy, right? We know what the mm -hmm. difference is, but it's not it's not completely clear and Red Hat doesn't sell it as, hey, we sell support for Streamzy, but we sell it as AMQ streams, for example, right? So that makes it quite intransparent what the differences are and aren't and so on. Mm -hmm. So what are the next steps we should try to get, identify the users which we will point them to? Um, I think that will be worthwhile before we um, sort of pressed on with this. Um, because like I say, although it's kind of up to the, the sponsor to sort of um, try and find users I think you know that's going to be one of their first questions to us yeah and it has to be end users right mm -hmm. <laughs> okay you know and then I sort of I think they interview them about sort of what their use entails and so on to get a sort of a clear picture as to you know um, if they're using it in production and you know how big their use of it in production is and blah 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 okay so it, you know it's not just we think these companies are using it i think we've ultimately we need to be able to sort of a conversation needs to happen between the sponsor and those end users um that's quite detailed so you know there needs to be people who are prepared to talk <laughs> I mean, Chris from um, CNCF did offer to sort of that we could book a slot and talk about the the process. So, we, I mean, we could do that um, if we want to sort of clarify more of these sorts of questions to sort of get a feel as to what we're committing ourselves to by going for incubation. Yeah, I think it might be interesting, maybe. Okay, so uh, should we try and um, plan a slot for when I'm back and get sort of some of the maintainers at least in a a brief conversation with Chris? I mean, it's just sort of a half hour meeting, so. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't need to be long, but understanding what will be expected for us and what should we prepare. Mm -hmm. The more I think we know about it, the easier point. it will be, right? Yeah, because even if we decide not to do it right now, we'll have a much clearer idea about what what we need to do before we think we are ready. So I think it will be worthwhile. Okay, so that's on you then. Yeah. 
Thanks. And I guess we all think about the sponsors <clears throat> and we should try to do some Slack and Twitter campaign to get more production users to the website and to the adopters and so on. As that ultimately helps us identify the users, right? Okay, what do we mm -hmm. talk about next? KubeCon office hours or survey update? Just shortly to survey update. Uh, I have created uh, some questions. A uh, few of them is uh, copy pasted from last year one. There are also new questions. Uh, I was looking into the cool questions, sorry, uh, to the answers from the last year. And I just did some uh, answers for the uh, copy pasted uh, questions. For example, uh, question number three, there was a lot uh, of uh, answers, uh, option G, which is a ranger. So I think it's uh, reasonable to contain this uh, this answer but i'm not sure whether i think eight answers is uh, what we want i think we need to think also whether the question makes sense in a way what did it gave us yeah yeah, what are we as a project going to do differently based on answers to that question? Yeah, I exactly. think the only sort of things that you could sort of say is, you know, maybe we'd um, blog about running Strimzy on one thing rather than another, for example. But for the most part, all we care about is it's Kubernetes. So it kind of doesn't matter which distribution it is. Yeah, I think the version would be more interesting. Did we have the version yes. question last time? Yeah, I think for, I, I think, think we so. did. There we was... did. Yeah. did we get some nonsense answers because nobody tells us the cube version, but everyone tells us some weird version of their distribution? There was a lot of weird answers, like uh, what version of streams do you use? And there was like, uh, I think uh, a lot of people mixed up it with uh, Kafka versions because they answered Streamzy version 2.7 uh, and this version of Streamzy obviously does not exist yet. So I'm not sure whether people are reading these uh, questions properly. So should we take this and think about it? Yeah, this Still document is meeting? open. This document is open, so anyone uh, can uh, uh, change or add the questions. Yeah, but, so uh, should that be what we do with it? Uh, everyone looks at it, thinks about it more, adds comments, and we get back to it next time? Yes, I think uh, comments good. are, yeah. Uh, which once again, Tom's not here next time. And I get the feeling that Tom adds a lot to these things. Should we cancel the community call next time? Or maybe we can do a quick one at least. Uh, okay, so that's the streams survey. And then we just got an email about the KubeCon NA office hours. So I assume we want to do office hours as always. Yep, sounds good. Yes. So who volunteers to take care of it?
now we won't end the meeting until someone volunteers. Well, Paolo is not here. Yeah, Paolo did it last time and then I had to do last minute all the preparation and so on. So I'm not sure we want to volunteer him. Okay, so I guess it falls to me as always. I can help you if you want. So do you want to take care of it? So no. you can be the you can be the contact person and I can help no, you pre prepare the content. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, oh, I that sounded like a reasonable compromise to me. Okay, then. Then I guess that's it for today. Any other topics to discuss? I wanted to talk about a Kafka exporter, but Alex is not here, so I don't think that makes sense. So another long call, but I guess that's it for today. Thanks, folks. Thanks. See you around. Bye. 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 Bye.